when I'm hiking and when I'm out in nature, when I'm so connected, when I'm out in the waves surfing, it's like you are one with the rhythms of the sea. You are one with the land that you're walking barefoot upon. You can feel the energy of the earth and this energy is not ending at the ground where the ground meets your feet. It's, it's going into your body. We are made of non-human elements. <laughs> Humans are made of non-human elements. We are made of sunlight, which we need to survive. We are made of oxygen, which we need to survive. We are made of nutrition from food, from plants that we need to survive. We need water. These are all elements, the elements of the earth coming together to make us who we are. want to use the term low waste here rather than zero waste because I think sometimes we can get too caught up on the bigness of the term zero waste and how impossible that sounds. I also can't say I know exactly where every single piece of waste I have generated has gone because I've eaten in restaurants and I've supported businesses that have generated waste and I don't know, okay, did the packaging for my food get recycled or not? And we've gone to the transfer station before back in Vermont and they have been like, oh, the, the recycling is full, we're, we're throwing the excess away. So I don't know, just for me, low waste feels like a better term. I'm more comfortable with using it and I think it sounds more achievable. So a couple of things I'll share that we do, this makes up really the core of our practice, was examining what is being thrown away. Because a couple of years ago, we weren't doing this. We had lots of trash. We had a trash barrel in our kitchen. We had um, waste baskets in our bathrooms and our offices and our bedroom and and we would accumulate trash and so when I started to look into low waste living and sustainable practices that kind of rooted and stemmed from my minimalist practice my practice of inviting minimalism into my life and being just so much more intentional about that I started to veer into okay well how can we lower how can we minimize our output of waste that's going into landfills it's being tied into plastic bags that are never going to break down it there's no system for making this amount of plastic go away there's no system at all um these are materials that aren't going to break down and the vast majority of that matter that's in landfills is packaging. And to me, that's heartbreaking. We live in our Airstream six months out of the year and we try to live as low waste and sustainably as possible. It's not a perfect practice. We're learning every single day. We're trying new things and seeing what works. And it's not about everyone practicing low waste or zero waste living perfectly. It's about millions of people doing it to the best they can with what they have. So I will show you guys what we're working on. And, we're, and I'm also gonna show a bit of how, how I incorporate minimalism into um, our lives. And it actually starts here with where we take off our shoes. These are the shoes that I've been wearing for the past nine months. I do a barefoot sandal. It's called Earth Runners. They're made in the United States. They're sustainably made, ethically made, sourced in the US, and they have like a connective copper little like thing on the toe, little disc. 
So it's, it's great if you can't go barefoot all the time, you can kind of make up for it with that. This little tent is our outdoor space where I like to hang out in the mornings and it's also where we store our compost. Right here you'll see I have one of our compost buckets that's not currently in use. Some a veggie that I'm still trying to figure out what to do with. And then we store everything inside the tent, inside of this bucket here. So we just kind of cover it up for aesthetic but we store our compost that comes out of the kitchen in this bucket and then we actually take it to a compost program that's a few miles away. When we're in Vermont, Vermont already has laws about composting and compost stations are available at every single transfer station. So even if you live rurally, you just go drop off your compost for free. Here we enroll in a program. It's actually an amazing system because it makes it a little more tangible. I like it even better than the system we have in Vermont because it really helps people to understand this is exactly how much waste from just one one station is being diverted from a landfill. And we calculated our scraps that we've been bringing for the past almost six months now, and we've diverted almost a hundred pounds from the landfill. So that's the thing is with composting i've heard so many people say well you know it's not really that much i'm you know it's just a f few food scraps here and there what's the big deal but when you add up well what would that be over the course of a year you may be diverting over 200 pounds of food waste organic matter that would compost into beautiful soil from a landfill where it would just sit wrapped in plastic so if if you have the opportunity to compost that, in my opinion, is one of the best things you can do. So that's our little system for here. You'll see where I have a smaller compost bin inside. So living low waste, one of the main concerns is not buying things in packaging. Doing a trash audit, I've heard it often called, and I think that's a great term for it because it's really auditing your trash. What is in your trash? What are you throwing away? What are you sending into the waste stream? And a huge amount of that and what ends up in landfills is packaging. We try to bring our own jars and bulk bags to the co-op or the farmer's market buy all our produce all of our grains etc etc without a package everything that has a package we try to make sure it's recyclable and if it can't be recycled through a normal city recycling system we then buy a TerraCycle zero waste box which i'll link their website below and we recycle those extra pieces of like hard to recycle material through that program so that we have the peace of mind knowing none of this is going to end up in a landfill. Over last summer, we really delved into making as much of our own food as possible, growing some of our own food, only going to farmer's markets. We were barely going into grocery stores except for a few things that we couldn't get anywhere else. 90% of our shopping was done in co-ops or directly from farmers then we were making our own food. Whereas when we're in a small space, we have to buy a lot of things in packaging. And the, the thing about stuff like this is you can't just throw this in your typical recycling bin, usually, depending on where you are. But I know here we can't. And so TerraCycle has been a real lifesaver. We've in, it is an investment, but to me it's so worth it to know that these types of plastic that are so hard to be recycled in any way are being very intentionally recycled as far as I know from what I've investigated. Um, a lot of people and friends in the low waste community have recommended TerraCycle so I feel pretty comfortable using their process, using their program, knowing that these plastics are going to be repurposed. One more thing about TerraCycle too is you'll actually find certain packages. I don't know if you can see this. That little symbol right there says TerraCycle on it, which means there's already a program set up for this particular company. So what you would do is you would just go to TerraCycle's website, and a lot of you guys might already be familiar with this, and you might be like, yeah, I already do that. But you can just go to their website, look up the company that has that symbol on it, 
and it will show you, okay, here's their recycling program and you can get a label for free. Sometimes they'll send you a package for free. Then you just load their products into the box and send it back completely free and you can know that all of these plastics aren't going to a landfill. They're getting recycled because that company has already paid to set up their own recycling program. It's really cool and it's, it's a great thing to take advantage of because it's already there. It's already in place. It doesn't cost you anything. So this is actually a look at how we do this when we're on the road recycling. This is our zero waste box. You can see it's pretty full. We're getting ready to send this one back in. We just received our new one. This is the small size, so it's pretty big for something considered small, but you can see that it has a label already on it and you literally just collect your waste in here. So whatever types of waste you have, metals, plastics, whatever, depending on the box you get. So you're going to take those items, make sure they're clean, fill the box, and then it's all labeled to be sent back. So I'm adding a few plastics that are not with any program into this box. And then for this bag, which actually is part of a program already, I'm going to add it to this box, which I'm collecting wrappers from things that are part of a recycling program and adding it to this box and then I sort out what programs I need to go sign up for in order to send these back, which I will be doing soon as well. We don't have, we have one small waste basket in this entire Airstream and I think we've maybe emptied it twice maybe two or three times since in the last six months. So we've really been able to consolidate and cut back on waste to be only the absolute minimum. It's been cool, it's been a journey. So this is our kitchen where we make food, we make coffee, we try to make as much of our own food as possible, which of course isn't as easy as it is back home in Vermont in our apartment. We have a lot more room to do like dehydrating and some fermenting. I'm gonna do more of that this summer and baking our own bread, making our own food. We make like so much of our own food, but we try to do a different version of that here in this space. We use reusables instead of anything that's single use. So instead of paper towels, we use these cloths. The same thing carries over into like bathroom, cleaning, bedroom, all of the rooms in our, our little space here have reusable cloths and whatever equivalent instead of the single use version of that item. We have all these things that are used one time and then thrown away, so we replaced all of that with reusable equivalents for those things, and they work fine. And when you think about it, you could go back in time not that long ago, none of that stuff exists. We lived on a planet that was much happier, much healthier, and we had no use, we had no need for those things, and we really don't now either. So there's thankfully so many reusable alternatives and we just took advantage of all of that all of the personal products we use for our daily care routines are all reusable and making those switches can there can be a little bit of a learning experience with them but it's so worth it it adds so much more value to your life to not be creating and accumulating so much trash and having to spend so much money as well. We've saved, we save hundreds and hundreds of dollars every year on things we don't have to buy. So that's just a kind of bonus that comes with it. And it's so much better for the earth. And to me, that's the number one thing. That's what, that's what drives me. You can make a list, you can look at and sort of just examine like, okay, what are the single use things that are coming in and out of my life? When we go out, we try to avoid getting lots of packaging from like coffee shops or if we eat out by bringing our own bamboo cutlery, our own straws, etc., etc. So a little bit of forethought goes a long way in cutting back waste. 
because when we go out without any without anticipating we might want to get a drink out we might want to eat out that's how we can easily start to accumulate waste because we just didn't really think about it beforehand so some stuff like this these reusable towels instead of paper towels using handkerchiefs instead of tissues just gives you an idea of a few of the things that we've done to cut back on waste underneath the sink is where we keep our compost where we collect the compost and then once this is full it heads out to the larger bin outside this is also where we keep some of our non-toxic natural cleaning products In our home, we try to use only non-toxic, all-natural ingredients to clean surfaces because you really don't need to use a lot of harsh chemicals. We use essential oils, we use baking soda vinegar, etc., etc. We try to keep it as organic and natural as possible. It's where we store all of our like cookware, dishware, coffee, spices, and this is where we keep both of our combined wardrobes. So this is, again, it really pays to be minimal when you're living in a small space, but it's been amazing to see like, wow, okay, all of our clothing fits right here in this space. And that's a pretty cool feeling and in a, in a world where you can often be encouraged <laughs> or harassed to have like new clothes every season and buy, 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 consume, consume, consume. And we really only need this small amount of clothing. We store some more food, teas, oils, coffee, snacks, and stuff up here. But this, so this closet is really multi-purposed and we find that this little capsule wardrobe is really all we need. Now the burden is lifted to be perfect, which we can't be. I'm not a perfect practitioner of low waste living or sustainable living, but I'm trying my best and we're experimenting. We're trying new things every day. We're connecting with more and more people who are doing this and we're learning. This whole thing is a learning process. It's benefiting us and thank God it's benefiting the earth as well. So if we looked at this more as a practice, something that we, we fall down, we get up, we, we try different things and see what's going to work for us individually, it's so much less intimidating. So I think the more we can find small ways in our everyday lives to do our best to love Earth, we are really loving ourselves. This is a form of self-care. This is a form of self-care. And lastly, I think living in a small space just keeps us really mindful about what we own. What are we bringing into our space and being super intentional about what we're bringing into the space because there's not a lot of places to store loads of things we're not using. So we have to take stock frequently and check in with ourselves and see what is really adding value to our, li our lives. and those things that aren't serving us anymore, can we release them into someone else's life where they will get more use and be able to serve them better? At this point, we create probably about two kitchen trash bags worth of waste per year. And we're always working on how do we lower that? Because as I said, our practice isn't perfect. We are still learning, but I think it's been an incredible shift to see just how much waste we could eliminate going from making several bags of trash, you know, having that much waste every week to having about two kitchen sized bags of trash per year. That blew my mind that we were able to do that. It's easy to get discouraged and overwhelmed and see, oh, well, there's like toxic fires burning here and there's huge spilling over landfills and all this plastic in the ocean. And what difference is it going to make if I do this or not? And I feel that it's so easy to get overwhelmed at where this is all going and the state of the earth it's hard to process sometimes but i think the more we tap into really the divinity within us that connects us to love 
we learn that it's not just about the big picture. It's about our individual pictures. It's about what we're individually doing in our relationship with Earth, our relationship with ourselves, our relationship with our children and animals, our family. It's all interconnected. So when we become conscious of what we're throwing away, conscious of what we're inviting into our lives, when we start to tap into this mindfulness that comes with low waste living or minimal living, it helps us connect deeper to who we are. And enough, if enough of us do that, it's going to change the, the state of the planet. It really will. It's a million tiny decisions that only take a moment of our time to shift from that to this. It doesn't have to be a massive um, action. It, it can be just little choices that we make in our day-to-day -day lives. So I hope you enjoyed this little look at how we live low waste in our Airstream home. Have you ever tried low waste living or what kind of practices do you invite into your life to live more mindfully? I would love to hear about your personal practice. I would be so grateful if you commented below and shared your unique journey with me, my friend. I'm so glad that our paths crossed today. Thank you for being here. If you feel drawn to support the channel in any way, you can find the link to my Patreon, also my Etsy shop, Vermont Boho, where my husband and I make all kinds of handcrafted art. You can find the link to that below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here with me on this journey. I'm so grateful for your presence here. Make sure you subscribe so I see you in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your day. Namaste.